In this video, I will show you two examples of how you can extract part of the page URL and then send it to other tools. One of those examples requires a bit of JavaScript, but don't worry, I got you covered. Here I have a demo Google Tag Manager container, and inside of it I have installed Google Analytics 4. If you have no idea how to install GE4 with Google Tag Manager, then take a look at the description of this video where I explain this process. So once you install Google Analytics 4 in your container, then you can continue watching this video. In this video, I will show you two different situations because they require different solutions. And let's start with the first one. Here I have a demo website. And on this website, there is a demo form that I can submit. And then the URL contains the form name. So when I send a form submission event to Google Analytics 4, I would also like to send the form name because maybe on this website, there are more forms and they have different names. So how can we do that? So the first option is related to fetching the value of URL parameters, also known as query parameters. URL parameters are available in the URL after the question mark. So if you have question mark and then some parameter name equals and its value, it means that you're dealing with query parameters. And there's a fairly easy way in Google Tag Manager to access that. Also, as you can see in this case, there are actually two parameters. One is this one, and the other one is this one, and they are connected with the ampersand. So let's see how can we fetch the value of the form name. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, Variables, and in User Defined Variables, click New. Then click Variable Configuration, URL Variable, and the Component Type. So this variable can access different parts of the URL, and in this case, we are focusing on Query. And here we have to enter the query key. In other words, the name of the parameter. In our case, that is form underscore name. So let's enter it. And then let's name this variable. Click Save. Now let's test if this is working properly. So I will click Preview. Then I will enter the URL of the website, click Connect. And then I will go to the form page, submit the form. And this is the success page. So if I go to the preview mode, and let's say I click on container loaded, for example, and I go to variables, I will see that my form name variable returns this value. As you can see, this variable can decode some special characters, for example, this one in URL means an empty space. That's why we have this combination right here. But here we just see contact empty space form. So the variable works fine. And now I could use it in a Google Analytics 4 event tag. So let's say that when the URL contains this, which is specific to the thank you page, then I will fire my tag. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, click New, Trigger Configuration, and then I will select, let's say, DOM Ready. But not all DOM Ready events, but only those where page URL contains contact posted equals true, because that's what I have right here. Then let's name the trigger, say DOM, thank you page, and click Save. Now let's go to Tags, click New, and create a Google Analytics 4 event tag. Here I will insert the variable that contains my measurement ID, or you can just paste your measurement ID like a plain text, but I prefer using this option. And then the event name might be, let's say, form submission. And here in the event parameters section, I will add a parameter which is called form name, or you can name it something else. And here I will insert the URL variable. So whenever this event is sent, this parameter will also be sent and its value will be taken from the URL. Then let's go to triggering and click DOM trigger. And then finally, I will name this tag and click save. Now let's test if this is working. So I will click preview then click continue. And here I am on the list of pages, then I will click the page, then I will submit the form. And I see that my tag in the DOM ready has fired. And if I check the variables, I will see that this should still work. So now let's go to GA4 debug view and see if the event was received and if the form name was sent properly. So I will go to analytics, then admin, then debug view. And then I click on form submission, because that's the event that I received. And as you can see, form name contains contact form. So this looks correct. And if any time in the future, you want to access the query parameters, you can use the URL variable. 
But what if you have a situation where you want to get the part of the URL, but that part is not a query parameter? Let's say that I want to send a content group or type of the page to Google Analytics as a parameter. And in this case, that would be blogs. If I go to this section, then I would like to see collections. Then if I go to another page, maybe here, then I would like to send the value products. And as you can see, this is the page path. So products, or in this case, let's say blogs, it's part of the page path. It's not query parameter, so URL variable will not work. It's not part of the domain. And if we go to the URL variable settings, and then we check what options do we have there, you will see that there is no option to get part of the page path. We can get the entire path, which would be in this case, this entire value, but we want to get just blocks, or in other words, just the first part of the page path. So how can we do that? To achieve this, we will need a custom JavaScript code. Below this video, you will find a link to my blog post where I explain how to extract part of the URL path. So click that link, and then scroll down to find the anonymous JavaScript function chapter. And here, scroll down till the very end of it. And this is the code that we are going to use. So copy this code, then go to Google Tag Manager, and let me create a new variable. This time, the type of the variable will be custom JavaScript. And here we need to paste the code. However, there are still some modifications needed, or at least they might be needed. So first, let's check what does this variable return right now. So I will name this first part of the page path and then click save. Then I will click preview. This will refresh the preview mode. And here I am on the list of various pages. And ideally I would like to access blogs. Now, if I go to tag assistant, click, let's say on continue loaded and variables, let's see what do we have. We have news and then this part right here. So it looks like we're actually getting this second part, but we want to get the first part. That's why we need to modify one number in the custom code. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, custom JavaScript variable, and then here let's change from four to three and click save. Click preview. And let's check what kind of value do we get. Let's select, for example, continue loaded, variables, and this time the variable returns this part right here. As you can see, this code works well with situations where we want to get not the last, part of the page path like this one, but if we want to get the last one, it will also include this. So if you are in a situation where you want to get the last part of the page path, then the code will be different. In fact, there are many ways how to solve this kind of situation. So here's just one example. So in Google Tag Manager, I could modify my existing variable. So instead of href right here, I will be looking only at the path. And then we need to take into account that sometimes page path will have a trailing slash, which means the slash at the end, and sometimes not. So let's do this. If page path has a slash at the end, we will remove it. And if it already doesn't, then that's fine. So let's write a little regex. We'll basically take the page URL, or in this case, the path, and then we will replace a slash at the very end and then we will replace it with nothing. And once we get that clean page path without a slash at the end, we will split the entire page path based on slashes, and then we will take the last available value of the page path. So in this case, it will be the last part, which is right here. I understand that this is much more advanced, but that's just how things work with JavaScript. And then we will enter a return statement because custom JavaScript variable always requires to use an anonymous function and a return statement. So to sum up, we first take the page path. And then if page path has a trailing slash at the end, we will remove that slash. Then we will take the remaining page path, split it, and we will use a slash as a separator. And then we will take the last remaining value of the page path, which in this case will be news or something else. So let's test if this is working and I will rename this variable to last part of the page path and click save. Now let's refresh. And if I click on the container loaded, for example, I go to variables, we will see that the last part of the page path in this case is news because that's what we have. Now if I enter, let's say slash like this, let's see how this will handle. 
and here the value is the same now if i go to catalog i should get the value all and it is all so this is working fine however let's go to the initial example which is to get the first value of the page path so i will just take that code from my blog post again i will copy it because i want to show you how to send this value to google analytics so in google tag manager i will go to my custom javascript variable i will rename this to first and then i will paste that code from the blog post and i change it to three because that's what we did and then click save so now when this variable is activated or when it is used it will always get the first part of the page path so now i could send it as a content group to google analytics 4. so in google tag manager i could go to tags then google analytics 4 config then click the pencil and in the shared event settings i can add a parameter which is called content group it is a known parameter to google analytics because we see this check mark right here and here i will insert the custom javascript variable so click save and let's see how this is working i will click preview the page has reloaded and my tag has fired at least the configuration tag now let me submit the form and then let's see what we have in the debug view let's go to google analytics i'm still in the debug view so now i will just close this and then here i have page view i can click it and here i see the content group which is blogs let's wait for the form submission event and here it is here's the event i can click it and one of the parameters is content group in fact it would be even a better practice if you used a google analytics settings variable then inside that variable you insert the content group and then you make sure that the settings variable is included in all google analytics 4 tags if you want to learn more about google tag and settings variable then i will post a link to a tutorial below the video and that's how you can extract part of the page url with google tag manager if you found this video useful hit the thumbs up button below the video that will help me understand what videos do you like and what should i create in the future also if you want to learn more about google analytics or google tag manager then consider subscribing to this channel my name is julius this is analytics mania and i'll see you in the next video